With a hybrid camera, you want to be able to change the settings really quickly for video and photography. Also, the environment changes, conditions change, and you want to be able to access all the best settings instantly on the fly. So I'm going to show you the best settings to have and how to set them up. So let's dive in and take a look. These custom settings work really well for photography or video. So I've changed the C1 button. So this punches in for uh, APS-C mode and it'll just affect the lens and it'll times it by one and a half. So your 50 mil lens will become 75, for example, which is really handy on a 61 megapixel camera in photography. That's really, really good. And when you're shooting in 4K or 1080p, it doesn't affect the resolution at all. It just changes the reach of the lens. And then the uh, C2 button here, I've just got this so I can instantly change uh, the focus area, whether I'm doing spot focus, wide focus, etc. And I can just uh, scroll up and down here. And then moving over to the uh, C3 button here, I've got that so it just changes my white balance so I could just move that around on the fly. Moving over to the AEL button, I've got that set up so if I was to have the camera on um, automatic ISO, I could then be say um, balancing it on a grey area in the room, got a nice setting, I push that, it locks that down and then I just carry on shooting and then when I hit it again it releases that you know you've got the setting on because you'll see a little star pop up here. The AF on button change from autofocus to manual focus, which is a nice little setting, particularly if you've got the focus peaking on or the reds as I call them. And as you can see on the little screen here, and because the autofocus was already on the background there, um, that's changed to a manual lens now. So really handy. For different uh, situations you might be doing product photography or you know you're shooting um, a model and it's the product you want in focus and not her face and you can just quickly switch into manual mode just check you've got the right item or, or subject in focus and the dial i've changed this to be iso so as i turn this it will just change my exposure as you can see, I've got the zebras on, so that will help me see if it's overexposed. But very quickly, I can set that up. So I like to use the camera on manual, whether it's video or photography. And then all I need to do if the light changes is just to bring up or low, lower my ISO. And then the centre wheel here, I've got that set so I can turn my eye tracking on or off. Again, I might be wanting to photograph a model and it's the product I want in focus and not to, for the camera to keep grabbing the face and the eye. So it's handy for me to be able to just very quickly turn that off when I need to. Next button here is I've got changed the bin icon and I've changed that to um, punching on the focus. So this works well if I've got um, in manual focus, for example, and I just want to punch in on the on the, this item here and then I can adjust accordingly and then I'll show you this function menu and you can see because I'm set on video the video menu comes up here and we're going to change all these settings to make this uh, easy to access and if you turn it to photographic mode that will bring up the photography menu which is only slightly different and I'll show you that in the settings right now. When you press the FN button on the back of your camera, it will bring up the function menu on the back of your screen and to change the layout of that, go along to the second camera image, the movie settings normally, and you go along to page nine again where your custom key selection is and you just drop down to function menu set. You click in there change all the settings here for photography or for video. As you can see here, I've got the first one set to focus, so I can change my different focus modes. 
moving across I've got the focus area because I might want to go to spot focus or tracking focus or just wide whether I want the eye autofocus on or off most importantly here I've got the peaking the focus peaking to show if my image is in focus or the reds as I call it you can change those diff to different colors if you wish I like to keep this function on all the time so I like it uh, easily accessible and here we have the um, zebra display again showing if it's any areas overexposed and then we've got the metering mode which I tend to keep at spot metering so just here we have the view button which I find really important to be able to have that easily accessible so that if you're doing product photo photography you can switch it off if you're doing regular photography without studio lights you can have it on so what you see is what you get if you did that in the studio you just have a black screen so that wouldn't work choosing if you want to shoot in just jpeg or just raw uh, this is really handy to have the silent shooting in certain circumstances i don't want people to hear the camera creative styles again white balance and whether we're um, type of flash we're using dropping down to the video settings you can have these so it just follows what you've set on the photography settings. One or two that I do change, uh, I don't need the flash setting, so I've got the APS-C mode here, and otherwise I've got the picture profile set in here, and of course the audio, don't really use that too much because I'm always using an external recorder. To set the quick access memory settings on the top dial, one, two, or three, so I go into the menu and I go to the first, image of the camera number one and I just drop down to page three and I go down to the bottom one where it says memory I select that and all the settings I've just put into the camera are there set and I just click number one it registers those settings and you can do that for photography settings video settings to set up all your custom buttons go to the second icon of a camera uh, the movie settings and you just drop down and go across to page nine and you'll see custom key you just click in there and this first one is for your photography settings i've got video settings mirroring photography settings for simplicity number one and I've selected that as the iso on the wheel to change it to something different you just push in and you can scroll across to any options you want. Drop down to number two and that's the AEL button and I've got that set to toggling between locking the exposure or not. Drop down to number three and the autofocus on button I've selected that to be autofocus or manual focus control and it will just toggle that on or off if you want to change it to any other settings you just scroll down choose a setting you want press ok and that will be set in there next number four is the c3 button and i've got that set to white balance and then dropping down again to number five which is the bin icon and that's the focus magnifier coming across to rear two settings you can now change these settings and I've left number one to be the same. I've just changed number two, the very center button, and that changes the face and eye autofocus to be on or off. Coming across again to the right, page three gives me the top buttons. And as you can see, number one, I've changed that to APS-C mode or full frame. So I can toggle that on and off. It's nice and close to my finger that will take the images so that's I think a perfect setting perfect place for that setting and number two is the focus area so that's how I set up my camera so I've made it my own I've customized like everything in the camera so it's just an extension of my hand and I just encourage you to play around with the camera set it up for your use and I hope that's given you a little bit of inspiration and some good tips on how to go about doing that so I hope you enjoyed that. Please subscribe and look forward to seeing you in the next one.